<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fast Money Plan. I'm Kirby and Alex. Today we're gonna to talk about savings. You had your hand up. No, 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 no. I was just saying, hey. Oh, oh I thought you were trying to stop me. Okay, <laughs> that's how it's over there. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about the thing that back in my day, back in my day, uh, when you know you talk to your parents and your grandparents and say, you know, you work. You work, you save your money, you save your money, and then it'll grow. All right, so now we're closer to those times back in the boom, baby boomer days, the 70s, the 80s, the 60s. We're back into that time than now. So today we're going to talk about savings accounts. I mean, over the past, you know, 20 years or so, savings accounts gave us little to nothing, but Alex is like a savings account master because I know the history of savings account, but he know all the places to go to get the best interest rates. So with that being said, Alex, what you got? Um, yeah. So I mean, I personally use Ally Bank, and we're not being paid by this, so there's no sponsors in this or nothing. Um, but Ally Bank, uh, their savings account. What I like about them is there's no monthly fees, there's no minimums, and they pay three point four percent. And I've tested it out, like left the account with nothing before, and it just went like months. So yeah, there's no minimums. They don't charge you any fees or nothing like that. Um, and uh, three point four percent. So for every ten thousand dollars, you'll get three hundred forty dollars. Yeah, per year, and it pays out monthly, and the interest accrues daily. So or it compounds, I'm sorry. It compounds daily. Right. Um, and then it pays out monthly. So there's other accounts and CDs and stuff I've seen. Um, like I know I think PayPal has like a four point one five percent thing with them. Um I just right. I see Navy Federal. I see Navy Federal got a five percent CD out there. Yeah. Yeah. I just prefer Ally Bank because it's just efficient and everything's all digital and online which i prefer um but there, there's other accounts that have higher interest rates i just preferred banking with ally um because i also know like robin hood they they do their own banking too now and i yeah, think so by things like that yeah yeah exactly but yeah, yeah. it's a, I mean it's it's Good to, I guess, like if you have an emergency fund, that's kind of what I use it for. Like if I have an emergency fund, I could keep it in my other bank regions where they don't pay nothing. Or I could just put in an ally and be the same thing, but I'm collecting something at least. So Right. And and over the over the let's say the past, I'm gonna say 20 years. I'm gonna say 20 years because we've been on a declining interest rate environment for longer than that, but I only can talk about my adult life. Uh so for the past 20 years. Um, the interest rate has been going lower and lower and lower. Now, right before, I mean, during even during the pandemic, 2020, 2021, 2022, bank interest rates was point, 0.0, you know, one something, yeah. something percent just for putting your money into the savings account. Now it's starting to, you know, rise up a little bit, 3%. That's still, you know, that's like a, 1200x where it was you know just a couple months ago that's a it's a big increase going from less than a percent to now three four i mean and then navy federal's case five percent but what it takes me back to is and you probably heard it when you was in school you're not you're young but you're not that young but when they used to say in school oh you know you you get a job you know you take 10 percent of it you save it and then you save it in a, in a account that will, they always say an account that'll pay you 10%. Not, they, they never say investment. It's an account that'll pay you 10%. And what they was talking about was back in the 60s, you know, especially 70s and 80s, there was bank, I mean, the savings account was paying you that much in interest because the interest rate was so high. You know, interest rate was at like, you know, 20% and stuff like that. So yeah, you could take it out and put it in an account. So that logic worked in the 70s, 80s. And then we went on a you know declining interest rate environment all the way until recently where we're coming up a little bit. 
So it takes me back to those days where now somebody's starting to see the fruits of their labor. Labor savers are starting to see just a little bit. You know, we of course it ain't that you know eight nine percent, but just a little bit of you know fruits from their labor. Save, save, save. They don't have to take the risk that they got to take in the stock market. They don't have to take the risk. I mean, even if they don't want to buy real estate, but now they're getting some fruits from their labors where savers are actually getting a little bit on the bone. Like you said. At a three percent, you know, three and a half percent interest rate, ten thousand dollars, you know, you still that's three forty. Yeah. A year ago, that same ten thousand dollars would have got you like four dollars in a year. <laughs> so that's that's roughly what it would be. So that's you know that's a good nuance of the banks. And I mean, Alex, you you have you have more knowledge on which accounts. I mean, I know with the SoFi's out there, they have one. Robin Hoods have one. Navy Federal. Uh, they have some uh, good interest rate products going on USA, and of course, I know I'm talking about military uh, banks because that's who I bank with, and I know a lot of people don't have access to that. But it's still some other ones that's outside the military, like we said, SoFi, Ally, those are out there. Robin Hood, you said they got a product out there. I mean, honestly, I don't look too much at the saving products. I always, because me, I'm a crazy guy. I'm always trying to invest and put money in the wind, so. The percentage is not there for me, but for people that's working, saving, scared to invest, I'm going to take that back. I digress. I'm not going to say scared to invest. They don't have the knowledge to invest. And I'd rather them have an avenue to make some money on their money than just go jump blindly into um, yeah. investments when they don't know what the hell they're doing. Exactly. So I am yeah, no, that's a great point. Because even like, honestly, people that are trying to do the day trading thing, like 96% of day traders fail. So if right. you're one of the 96%, you're not making money, you're losing. So you would have been better off putting that money in a savings account that pays interest than, you know, trying to gamble it away. Um, Even with some, with some real estate deals where people don't know how to do the numbers and they're getting deals that are only cash flowing 4%, 5%. Like in that case, you might as well have just put it into a, you know, savings account. Like, free. Hey, yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of truth to that. I still follow Kirby's path, throwing like a crazy man in the wind, but <laughs> I mean, but you have to, you know, it takes knowledge and studying investments and understanding what you're investing in to make more than that three, four, five percent mark. Right. And if you and, and it's called the hurdle rate, the, the official term of the hurdle rate. If you do it, any investment, I don't care what it is. You know, you can be selling Teletubbies on the side of the road for all I care. Only thing you got to do is the hurdle rate is putting in a savings account is risk free. Of course, you got FDIC insurance and things like that is risk free. If you're getting the same return as a risk free uh, investment, I put in a savings account right now. So. What I'm saying is if your margin is 3% selling lemonade on the corner, if your margin is 3%, it's better just to put it, I mean, investing in a, a lemonade stand that has margins of 3%. It's better just to put your money in the savings account and get the 3.5%. Now you ain't got to worry about lemons going bad. You ain't got to worry about the lemonade stand being robbed. You ain't got to worry about none of that risk. And the money will grow better than if you you know, going out there and investing in something at par. So when you're investing, you always see what's the risk-free rate. I mean, 10-year treasuries is, you know, at 4%. They just cracked the 4% mark yesterday. So if you're doing any investment that's not yielding you over 4%, you shouldn't be doing it. And then, I mean, it's a higher uh, interest rate on the lower end of the curve. So 5%, 6%. So if you're doing investments that's not returning you at least that, and you're taking risk to do that, you just put it in these risk-free. And when they say in risk-free, it's the U.S. government. And that is the closest thing to a risk-free investment that you will ever find. If the U.S. government don't pay, the whole economic world will collapse. And that's the closest thing and who has the most pressure on them to pay every month. So that's what you need to look at. You need to look at, hey, what I'm investing in, if you choose to go the investment route, if it's not yielding more than risk free, then go risk free to eliminate the risk and 
again, the gap between risk free and what you're doing is called the hurdle rate. So do some research and understanding on that. And don't call your investor, don't call yourself an investor unless you know what the hurdle rate is. Yeah, absolutely. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, uh, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.